Good early evening here from downtown Honolulu, Hawaii. Welcome back to Human Humane Architecture. Today's show will be dedicated to the most important uh, single family residence on our island, on the islands of Hawaii. And we had Howard Wig uh, in the last show, and this house here could, see, could be seen as a demonstration of all the principles that he's been talking about making houses easy breezy, he being Mr. Breezy Easy. So today we want to show you a house that demonstrates that. And maybe to the surprise of the audience, it's not a new house. Well, actually it is, because it's as fresh as it used to be, but it was built quite a while ago. And our, our guest today is Bob Lillestrand, who is a dear colleague of mine, uh, architect by training, and uh, currently dedicated to keep, that's how I call it, the show, the Lily Strand Legacy. So welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Martin. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for your total immersion in Hawaiian architecture, and particularly for your support of this house. Thank you, thank yeah. you. And I charge you with a tough task to talk about the house in about three minutes only, because then we want to talk about you and uh, how you keep uh, the house so young and fresh and up to date in today's uh, world. Well, let me give you some background on the architect, the client, and the house, and I'll try to keep it two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, Osipov was designed by, designed by Vladimir Osipov in the late 1948 and built mm -hmm. by my parents, 51, 52. Mm -hmm. Little background on Osipov, he was born in Vladivostok, Russia, but his father was a military attaché to the Tsar, uh, to the Emperor of Japan from the Tsar. Mm -hmm. So he moved to Tokyo when he was two years old. He was raised in Tokyo. Uh, the Russian Revolution happened, so the family could not go home. He uh, watched Frank Lloyd Wright build the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo. And then 1923 was what the Japanese called the Great Kanto Earthquake. Mm -hmm. And the mother did not want to remain in Japan anymore. She thought it was dangerous because it was earthquake prone. So the family moved to San Francisco mm -hmm. to get away from earthquakes. Mm -hmm. uh, graduated from UC Berkeley in 1931, Great Depression, little work, but a friend said, let's go to Hawaii. So mm -hmm. he came here, worked briefly for a couple of architects, then for a building supply firm and opened his own office in 1936. Practiced mm -hmm. continuously until his death, basically until 1998, 62 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody's very sure, nobody's sure about how many structures he built, hundreds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My parents, interesting multicultural story, my dad was a second generation Swedish American, but when he was four, his parents moved to Sichuan, China, where they lived for 33 years, from 1916 till 1949. Mm -hmm. My dad left China in 1927. His parents stayed, came back to the coast. His father was a medical missionary. My dad intended to do the same. Uh, so he came back to go to school, but he graduated medical school in 1937. Asia was in chaos. His parents were saying, why don't you hesitate and see what happens? So he came to Hawaii, figuring he was more than halfway home, and he figured, yeah, I might as well do an internship in the West. Mm -hmm. He came here because he wanted to study tropical diseases and work with Asian culture. And that's how he got here, and he never left. Mm -hmm. For a long time, they held on to the dream of going to China, but eventually they gave up and said, let's build a house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the house is different than these days when you would think, where should a house be? Ideally, you would say on the beach, on the coastline, you got the view of the ocean. Everybody was looking for beach lots. Exactly. And my so dad said, no. Mm -hmm. He said, I want to be in the mountains. I want panoramic views. I want cool breezes. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, where he lived in China got over 100 degrees in the summer. So the professors where my grandfather taught had a retreat up in the mountains, and mm -hmm. he would spend his summers mm -hmm. in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And where most, when we say this is the most important, maybe the most fancy house, uh, most people then want to hide it and don't want to show it. In this case, it's totally different, right? Well, it uh, received immediate recognition, basically. Mm -hmm. This, of course, was a major article, Pace Setter edition, cover in 53 pages. The editor at House Beautiful, uh, she was there for 26 years, Elizabeth Gordon. And uh, she did 17 of these, where she devoted an entire issue to one house. Interestingly, this was not the first publication of it. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, uh, by the way, page one, Zori, if you can bring this up in the background, it would be great. Thank you. The landscaping was published in Sunset Magazine in 1953. Specifically, the whole front bank used to be lilies. They're not there anymore, mm -hmm. too hard to maintain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's probably been published, I don't know, 50, 60 times at this point, mm -hmm. all over the world. Mm -hmm. It is on the National Register. It's also unique because the architect did or selected all the major furniture, 
mostly selected, I guess, the freestanding furniture, but was, he, he was known for built-in furniture, and he did all of that, of course. He also did the interior design work. Mm -hmm. It's also unusual because it remains as it was. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's exactly the way as it was 60, 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also thoroughly documented. Mm -hmm. My mother was on site every day. She wrote extensive letters. At one point, she even said, save these letters because I'm writing the story of a house. Mm -hmm. And they photographed everything. Mm -hmm and the contents are there, and all the architectural documentation, sketches, little tracing paper sketches, mm -hmm. uh, the actual drawings, everything is there. So the, the architectural historians really love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so again, the first publication is from 1958. So usually people think, you know, when houses are a couple years old or a couple decades, they basically, the new mentality is bulldoze it down and build a new house. <laughs> So, and your, thanks to you and your great work, you, you keep this house alive. Uh, first of all, physically taking care of it, but also uh, sort, of, um, sort of mentally taking care of it because you continue uh, publications. You continue, so the Metropolis Magazine that Zuri showed, which is a picture too, is dated from uh, 2008. And it has how many pages? This one is probably six pages. This one is like eight pages and 17 mm -hmm. photographs. That was just published about three months ago, May, in Japan. Interestingly, it was generated out of Monocle's. Monocle is headquartered in London, but it was generated out of their Japan bureau. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they have major bureaus in all the major cities. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, and the I think I'm really pleased with this article. It's, it's wonderful. And, uh, the photographer is, I believe he's from Japan, but he does live here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. There is, uh, so the house, just to clarify that, you said the house is, is almost as a museum, and actually, so, no one is living in the house. We Nobody's living in the that. house. At there, least not in the core part of the house. There is an apartment on the property. Mm -hmm. My wife and I live there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. But the house is, is, is sort of not uh, occupied all the time. But it is kept alive. There are people in there. When are there people? We in do there? maybe three, four tours a week, mm -hmm. and these are very extensive tours. They last for about an hour and a half to two hours. Mm -hmm. We have an association with Halikulani. They send guests up there on two days a, a month. They will mm -hmm. offer a tour of the house to their guests. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot with students. Mm -hmm. uh, we even had a studio from Harvard up there mm -hmm. a few months mm -hmm. back. And, and since you mentioned that, we should give credits to uh, Dean Sakamoto for particular reasons, right? Well, that? Dean pretty much put all this on the map. Mm -hmm. He's, Dean is originally from here, mm -hmm. practicing architect, but he was, if I have this all correct, he was working uh, in New Haven and a mm -hmm. professor uh, at Yale. Mm -hmm. And he came out here on a consulting job and kept running into Osipov, 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 mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. finally decided to look into it. And he curated the show, mm -hmm. the museum show. He did the book on Osipov's work. Mm -hmm. He organized the film on Osipov's work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So actually, in many ways, none of this would have happened without Dean. Mm -hmm. He's That's the one true. that really noticed. Because he started to do research, mm -hmm. and he couldn't find anything. Mm -hmm. He said, why isn't anything done on this guy? Mm -hmm. He was brilliant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he did, you mentioned that, so he did a book, and with a book went an exhibition, or the book was a documentation of that exhibit. And It was the catalog for the exhibit. Exactly. And yeah. uh, so he was the director of exhibitions at Yale, and in that yes. capacity he did it. And they built, uh, awesome with his students, they built uh, scale models, and the model of, of your house is in your house. Yeah, I think he had his students, uh, the studios doing models for yeah. a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which and is they're research. beautiful models, yeah. quarter inch models, mm -hmm. they're big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Interiors yeah. are in the models. Yeah. 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 And they traveled as far as where I come from, there was an exhibit, that exhibit went the to the The models children. were built in New Haven, flown to Honolulu mm -hmm. for the opening of the show, then flown back to New Haven for the show at Yale, mm -hmm. and then flown to Frankfurt for to go. be shown in the German Museum of Architecture in go. Frankfurt, exactly. and then flown back to Honolulu. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and this is amazing, and, and a little bit now I'm pouring water into that wine. We just say the next show we should do with wine. We just got it authorized <laughs> by our well, director. Like there you go. Yeah. And, uh, let's talk about that, actually, the <laughs> mentality, the lifestyle, the mindset that's behind the house uh, later on a little bit. 
And the, the phenomenon is that there is a saying, at least in Germany, that the prophet isn't that much, that much worth in its own front yard or in her own front yard. And that's certainly true that this house, to some degrees, is, is known more outside of the island. Uh, sort of a critical core of people obviously know about it and, and do their best to Interestingly, that's it. true. Yeah. It, that? uh, <clears throat> it's probably best known in Japan. Mm -hmm. It's been published many, many times in mm -hmm. Japan. Mm -hmm. I, it might be fair to say a majority of the people that come on our tours are from Japan. Mm -hmm. but it's also been published in China, mm -hmm. Russia, mm -hmm. England, uh, Norway, Australia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there uh, have been a number of fashion shoots as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there is, um, there are travel guides, and there's one that I put in the announcement that's one of the most important art and architecture publishers in the world, They're also headquartered in, in London. And Monocle is the other one, but the other one is Fade and oh, Wallpaper. Yeah, Wallpaper. And that's a magazine we can highly recommend. They're only 10 bucks. Yeah. Uh, this one is as well, not much more expensive. And they have a similar city guide, which mm -hmm. I neglected mm -hmm. to bring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's fine. But and, uh, This one was just released. But, the, but the thing is, our little sort of constructive criticism is that we both, without oh, knowing yeah. <laughs> about it, we went to uh, Barnes & Noble, right? Well, I don't know about this one. No, but the other but one. when the, the wallpaper faded, one came yeah, out, yeah. I called Barnes & Noble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I said, you have the uh, wallpaper city guide. Mm -hmm. And I said, no. Yeah. I mean, what? <laughs> giving credits to Wei Fang, she actually had it when she still had the I.I. She gallery did. I in Kakaako. Yeah, she had it I there. I remember that, yeah. And then when she switched over to the Agora, it's another forum, yeah. so she, she stopped yeah. doing it, also for financial reasons. And, and she told me that the AIA, the local AIA, that you're an associate, so you're trained as an architect, but you don't practice as an architect, but you're highly involved in, in, the, in the profession, in the discipline. Yeah. I did work for, I went back to architecture school, as you probably know, late in life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I did work for an architect for five years. Yeah. So I have some experience. Yeah, and you have very strong ties to the AIA here and, and work together and also with the house and, and in general. And so we were trying to, Wei was saying she was, the, the AIA said, well, why don't you s continue to do and make a bookshop? And she said, well, bring me the customers, you know, because otherwise <laughs> I can't right. run right. professionally yeah. and profitably. So this is something for us to think about that, that many people who are culturally interested will be in major cities in the world, in the good bookstores, and there is a tower of fade and wallpaper city guides, and they pick up the Honolulu one and they come here with the perception of that this is a prime piece of architecture and that's how they get to you. But when you go here into the major, and we don't have few uh, uh, libraries and, and, and uh, bookstores, yeah. you can't get it. So once again, it's, this is important, so bringing this on the show well, is Well, I'm sure that this and also the wallpaper one, they're both out of Europe. Mm -hmm. I guess England is part of Europe anymore, I'm not sure. <laughs> because of the Brexit, yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> they Brexit and they probably got them out. in bookstores all over the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's certainly yeah. true, yeah. yeah. Um, so um, we will take a short break and pick, pick up from there again. So um, thanks again for tuning in about uh, the Lily Strand legacy with Bob Lily Strand. So see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Aloha, I'm Richard Emery. I'm with co-host Jane Sugimura of Condo Insider, Hawaii's weekly show about association living. The uh, purpose of these videos is to educate board members and condo residents about issues uh, relating uh, to association living. Uh, we hope they're helpful and uh, that they uh, assist in resolving uh, problems that uh, affect the relationship uh, between boards and their residents. Each week, Thursday at 3 p.m., we bring you exciting guests, industry experts, who for free will share their advice about how to make your association a better place to live and answer a lot of very interesting questions. Aloha, we hope you'll tune in. Welcome back to Human Humane Architecture today with Bob Lillestrand about his Lillestrand legacy. Uh, Bob, um, so the, the show is, is about human, humane architecture, and I explained at times when I got the chance that it's, it's an inclusive approach. 
So we were talking about a house high up on the hills. It sounds like high end, and but actually the house isn't, right? Talk about the scope, both the physical size and also about the means um, that were available back about more than a half of a century ago. Well, you know, Asipov took the Mod the principles of modernism, basically, mm -hmm. and just softened them, made them a little more Hawaiian, mm -hmm. uh, used wood and natural stone rather than concrete, mm -hmm. deep, deep eaves, slatted roofs. Uh, the house is set back from the road. Mm -hmm. Basically, the entry sequence starts as you start driving in the 1,400-foot driveway. Mm -hmm. It's all overgrown and closed in. He wanted a little path through the woods to come to this house. Mm -hmm. As you approach the house, the roof is very, very conservative. Mm -hmm. He did not like flamboyance on mm -hmm. the exterior of, mm -hmm. of his houses. Mm -hmm. Parking set away from the house, a little bit of a buffer garden between the parking and the house. Mm -hmm. Dark, low ceilings and cool as you walk past the garden and into the, the main house, the ceiling remains low. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally he brings you to this point where he gives you the aha view, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he takes you through this whole sequence. Yeah. And you talk about humane architecture. The, 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 uh, everything is comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like you walk through the door and you're in the living room. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There, there's, a, there's a sequence, there's a passage, and then it leads to here and it leads to there. And, and uh, he was brilliant at that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He was brilliant at these, these ways yeah, that he... Yeah you know, manipulated and then offered views or yeah, yeah. retained views and then offered views. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a very, it's also a very modest house. I don't know if you're comfortable to talk about the initial building cost. The cost were $60,000. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't and sound much. I went on the web, I went on to a uh, inflation table and that mm -hmm. came out to $420,000. This is what a generic DHHL house costs out there in Cup Bay right, these right, days, right. right? So but my mother, who was very, very much involved with the making of this house, mm -hmm. it used to irk her that people would say, well, they can have that big fancy house because he's a doctor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because her position was, it's cheaper to build a well-designed house than a poorly designed mm -hmm, house. Mm -hmm. I, when all your walls make sense and your framing makes sense, yeah, yeah. you save money. There's a picture here from the from the from these good old days, right? Oh yeah, this is this is what my mother called the rug. You're sweeping up the dust on the floor. You kick this thing up, kick the the little door open, kick the thing up, and sweep the dust under the rug. Mm -hmm. So the house she had an eleven-page document that she gave the architect on our very first meeting on what she wanted in the kitchen. That's what we call an informed client, right? <laughs> Clients who know what they want. Well, interestingly, there was a programmatic. Uh, document of two pages, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but a specific spaceless document of 11 pages for mm -hmm, the kitchen. Mm -hmm. The programmatic one was for the whole house. Yeah, yeah. And, the and house we have all that stuff. Yeah. Little sketches, yeah, you know, yeah. star, you know, yeah. whatever, roses or whatever you call them to show, yeah, yeah. you know, wind directions and yeah, views yeah. and blah, mm -hmm, blah, blah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And the house is as fresh today. I just had the chance to be up there. It's again. basically exactly the same. Yeah. There's a very small furniture yeah. change in the yeah, library. Yeah, yeah. So my dad at 92, who loved movies, didn't have to drive to the movies alone at night. Mm -hmm. he could, we set up a little theater for him. Mm -hmm. There are two Jack and Jill bedrooms that had built-in double bunks. There were four kids. The two boys started in one of them, the two girls in the other. Later, we moved out into mm -hmm. other areas. Mm -hmm. uh, when we left, those bunks were removed, and these rooms were turned into offices. Other than that, the house remains exactly as it was 60 years ago. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's almost surrealistic. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, and you had us over. I have my oldest son, Joey, still visiting, who's here with us. Hi, Joey. And uh, you had him up there, and yeah. we caught up on many things. And After you left, I realized we never went downstairs. <laughs> I realized that, too. <laughs> we saved that for next time to okay. get him back, right? Yeah. And, and it is. But I have to say, the, the house is also so fresh and up-to-date because of you and Vicky, because you, you keep it alive. When we say it's a museum, I would sort of respectfully disagree, because it's, it's really fresh and... Um, Although you were humbly self-critical because you just came back from far away from North Carolina. And what was one of the reasons you were there? Share that. The house was actually duplicated seven or eight times. Mm -hmm. uh, Wisconsin, Kansas, Aspen, Colorado, North Carolina, Perth, Australia, Norway, I believe. Mm -hmm. 
And these folks would write my parents and said, we, we saw that your house in a magazine and we want to build it. Please send us the plans. They said, well, I can't do that. You know, the plans basically are the, are the architect's plans. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but anybody, there are a lot of cartoonish plans in here. Anybody could copy it, mm -hmm. and a number of people did. Mm -hmm. Some of those people have kept in touch. Mm -hmm. The grandchild of one of them has now become an architect. Mm -hmm. And we actually went and visited one of those houses about mm -hmm. two, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was actually a very strange feeling to walk through our house mm -hmm. somewhere else. And it was very interesting because they basically followed the plan and they did look at the photos and follow the elevations somewhat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they made some changes and the changes were smart changes for their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's not exactly the same. The basic layout is the same. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and it was also sort of, it was, I think it's fair to say this is very Japanese. You know, people, documentary filmmakers have come from Japan to yeah. film this house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think they took this house and they made it American. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it was still really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm sure they, the family had a wonderful time in that house. On 65 acres, two lakes, it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and talking the events you have, and you, you rented out for certain events, and filmmaking, and you know, usually when you think about, you know, actors and 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 producers, and they make money. You know, what do they buy these days? There isn't ge there isn't any general sort of education, aesthetical education anymore. This is actually interesting because when you talk about your Scandinavian, you know, family heritage, you know, Scandinavia has always been at the forefront of design education. Right. So, right. You know, yeah. so there's that. Yeah. But you also had uh, so talking TV here on the island. We we have Hawaii Five O. There's there's an anecdote about Hawaii Five Hawaii Five O. Are you familiar? Uh, well, they shot there. Yeah. It's actually interesting to me that uh, when Alex walked in, he looked at me and said, "Who designed this house?" And I said Vladimir Ospov, and he said, "You're kidding! I just bought an Ospov house." Mm -hmm. And so we got in a long conversation. And after about, we'd gone downstairs. And after about 45 minutes, I said, "You know, there's 100 people waiting for you upstairs. Maybe you should go to work." Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said, "Yeah, I should, but I want to continue this conversation." So mm -hmm. I gave him a card. He got a hold of me that afternoon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Said, "Can I come up on Saturday?" And uh, I'm off on Saturday, and then took us out to his house. And it was it was really fascinating. I've been to a number of Ospov houses. Mm -hmm. But I love to see, you know, how he brings you into the house yep, because yep, that's yep. such a big part of mm -hmm. Ospa. Very celebratory. You know, he was he was known for using very few words, and mm -hmm. you know, my dad asked him about asphalt, and he said as little as possible. That's you know, all I said mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. very sure. I asked him once about the Museum of Modern Art in San Francisco, which mm -hmm. has all the the the. They've redone it. I'm not sure how it is now, but it has the marble of different shades, a lot of different shades. Mm -hmm. And I just got back from San Francisco and I said, Val, I said, have you been to the Museum of Modern Art in San Francisco? He said, yeah. And I said, what do you think? And he looked at me and he said, two stripe it. That's all he said. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's a Mario Botta, by the way. It's I know. It's yeah. the 80s, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. that's so true. And always to do a little bit of architectural history here, which, you know, I'm far away from being anywhere close to that, but I'm reflecting on things. So when people try to label it as sort of the, the local version of Frank Light Wright, I'm always sort of in slight disagreeing with that. Of course, there's some truth to that, but I think it's actually more, he's more in the sort of in the realm, uh, the school of thought of the case study houses uh, back in California. Craig Elwood, you know, who I thought did it the same way. The houses are very sort of aust almost austere, very closed, very nondescript. And the very first show we did here is is with a friend of ours who, who is Les Wallach, yeah, that sure. he just met. And, sure. and Les's house on 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 Maui is in, I love that house. Is in that tradition, isn't it? <laughs> Wonderful house. And of course, the means and methods are different yeah. because yeah. you know times have changed, and you know even your house is built mainly out of redwood, which is also a reason why it doesn't have termite problems to the degree that other houses have. And so Les's is out of metal because today we run out of wood here right, in the area. Right. So that's the logic evolution. And you could call our house austere. Some people do. No, and, and, and I uh, mean this respectfully. Oh, yeah, know, I know. But, but, but the, that's part of the beauty of it. It is. You know, it the, is. it's simple. It's really clean lines. Yeah. The furniture is very yeah. matter of fact and yet yeah. comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, no. And it has this. We were talking the other night about what it, it has this, it, it's very peaceful. Mm -hmm. 
it really affects people that have, you know, it's, it's a wonderful place to just be. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people will just drift off and they say, you get this sort of magic feeling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you ask me, well, what do you attribute that to? And uh, you're the professor of architecture, that's your department. <laughs> <laughs> At times. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, uh, and uh, I think it's, it's great that sort of some uh, sort of critical mass of people who engage with cultural issues. And it reminds me of when my sister, who also uh, showed the house some years ago when she was visiting. She happened to be in, L in LA a couple of years ago and was able to visit the case, uh, case study house 22 by Pierre Koenig, which is probably the most iconic. And Joel Silver, who just made the Matrix movies, you know, had bought the house at that uh -huh. time. So there is a sort of, uh, you know, intellectual, uh, you know, realm of people who start to notice and, 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 and see what the value of these things are and you know through them you know they became sort of cool you know again yeah. which which is kind of important to to keep them cool and we're getting close to the end of the show and i want to use that one thought that i just had about cool because we just want to make make clear that this house is literally and figuratively cool because <laughs> it's actually naturally ventilated right yes Ospop was a fanatic about that he mm -hmm. did not like air conditioning mm -hmm. and it's beautifully naturally ventilated. You know, if you leave all the doors and windows shut, then it doesn't work. But if you open the proper windows and, you know, there's vents on the Malka side, mm -hmm. there's large windows on the Mackay side, mm -hmm. and even in relatively still days, because the, you know, warm air comes up from Paola Valley below, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. little breezes come in from the vents from, from Malka, mm -hmm. there's always a little bit of mixture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is one climate controlled room in the house air conditioned and dehumidified, and yeah. that's because we've got photograph material back into the 1800s in there, and mm -hmm. letters sold, they're written in Swedish, and uh, it's an amazing archive. So we also have this incredible archive. Mm -hmm. Thank you very yeah. much. We reached the end of the show. Thank you very much for this little appetizer about the well, most awesome house on the island that you keep awesome and, and share. So thanks for doing that. Thanks for being here. Well, and, thank you, uh, Martin, hope for your do. interest. That's you most welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, look forward to see you again uh, next week at Tuesday early afternoon here in downtown Honolulu for a human, humane architecture. See you then.